Yeah, hello class. We are here to take our second topic, which is real number system. We have real number system. Now, when we talk about the real number system, we are talking about numbers in this world. And numbers in this world consist of so many things. We have the smiles, raw numbers, just any number you can think of. But with the exception of two types of numbers in our level. Any number over zero or the square root of negative numbers. So suppose we are seated in the class and I ask one of the students to count the number of students in the class. So he will start by one, two, three. So those are the set of counting numbers. So counting numbers starts from one, two, three, to infinity. So we can have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we call them the set of counting or natural numbers. Now, when the operation subtraction is used on the set of counting numbers, we can have a situation where we have two minus two, which is zero. And zero is not part of the set of counting numbers. So we call them whole numbers. So whole numbers are numbers which starts from what? Zero, one, two, three, to infinity. Again, when we use the operation subtraction on a set of natural or whole numbers, we can also have three minus one, which is giving us two which is part of the counting numbers, 5 minus 7 is minus 2, which is not part of the set of um, counting numbers. So we call them integers. So for integers, integers are negative and positive whole numbers, which include 0. So we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, to infinity. So integers are just negative whole numbers and positive whole numbers, including 0. And they also run from infinity to infinity, from the negative infinity to positive infinity. So we have integers. So after integers, we also have what we call rational numbers. OK, so rational numbers consist of counting numbers, whole numbers, integers, and then we have fractions. Now, if I have a fraction A over B, and I can express any decimal in the form of A over B, then this is a rational number. And one unique thing about a rational number is, normally it has an end, and then the values keep repeating. So let's say if I have a number like 2.32, and then 2 is recurring. This is the same as 2.32222. So the 2 recurring means this is what? A rational number. Even though in this case it is running to infinity, it can be expressed as what? A fraction. And then it has an end. Now, when we pick for the irrational numbers, for the irrational numbers, for the irrational numbers, they cannot be expressed normally, they cannot be expressed as a fraction. Why? Because they have no end. When we have, um, let's say, 22 over 7, which is equivalent to pi, this is 3.142, and it runs like that. But we can't even predict the next number when it comes to the 22 over 7. Well, it's unlike the rational number where we can see that the value 2 keeps repeating itself. But for the pi, it's 3.142781, then it goes on and, on and on. So the values are not repeated, and this is what's irrational. Now, when we talk about the real number system, now the real number system consists of all this. So we have the set of natural numbers, the set of whole numbers, the set of integers, let me use z. So we have integers for 
z and then we have rational numbers let's use q for rational numbers and then irrational numbers i use i with subscript q so this is irrational numbers so all these numbers make up the real number system now any number you can think of in this world is in here except any number over zero or the square root of negative numbers these two types of numbers do not exist in this real number system numbers if you should get any of this it doesn't exist in this real number system because it is imaginary we can only imagine it there's no definite answer for anything over zero or the square root of negative and negative numbers so these two things these two types of numbers do not exist in the real number system so any number you can think of in this world is in here except these two.